Trino. The announcement is expected to be a return to the Big Sky Conference for their football program. Uh, this day, a JP special, a 50-50 fan somewhat split on how this uh, should go. We now know yeah, that Vandal fans, maybe. The Big Sky Conference direction. Well, Gentlemen, we may have a, a minute fans, here, yeah. but Bob, your thoughts here in 15 seconds? I think probably they felt there were no other options, would be my guess. It'll be interesting to see what they claim they're going to save. By going FCS. Chris, I know this is all new to you on some level, but it's new to a lot of people, dude. Yeah, unprecedented. And that's a word a lot of people have been using. I think it opens up a lot of different questions that I'm looking forward to being answered here within the next, hopefully we get to it within the five minute stretch here of them being able to answer a lot of the questions not only we have, but a lot of the fans of Idaho, supporters of Idaho, alumni, all have. A lot of hand wringing, I think, went into this decision. Uh, some suggesting that Can perhaps. I Athletic Director Spear was mm -hmm. deferring to the president that this was his decision, that Spear didn't have anything to do with it, and maybe that allows him to sort of save some face and continue the fundraising activities of the athletic department. I just want to add, guys, we will have post-press conference reaction here. We will get you back to the Jim Rome show. Uh, oh. We certainly have a lot more of Bob and Chris coming Jim your way Rome beginning at 1 o'clock this Idiot. afternoon. You guys have picks uh, 11 on through 20 in the... KTIK NFL mock draft plus reactions to what's going to happen here with what we expect to be Staben first and then a reaction from the athletic director and the head coach. I've never seen anything like this, Bob. Maybe you have. No, I've seen teams go up. I've seen teams drop football. I've never seen somebody go back. So this is certainly uncharted territory. Um, of several in the East that I've been associated with in conferences have dropped football. And uh, those con press conferences obviously weren't even as good as this. The history lesson, Chris, we gave yesterday in Idaho Sports Talk is the Vandals have wrestled with Division One affiliation in football really since the PCAA, the Pacific Coast days. When they Apparently, to state this is happening. They couldn't do it. They went into the okay, so uh, just so that you're aware, uh, somebody has just tweeted just now, it seems like Idaho is having issues again with teleconferences. I'm on hold and hear nothing, but I can hear via live stream everyone's ready. So, uh, University, University of Idaho and, comp and teleconferences again. I think it's correct to suggest it's the first time they've dropped, uh, anybody's dropped down. It's the first time anybody's dropped down from FBS. Still recording, right? This new designation. Yeah, new okay, cool. I guess add a different wrinkle to it. And you're right. Like I've been here for three years, but that's nowhere near enough of a time to grasp the importance of Idaho to this region, to the entire state, and where their football program has been. Because I mean, look at it. One win year, one win year, and a four win year. My three years here. So right. I. But since I've been here, whenever we talk about Idaho football, it's usually not in a positive light. But by reading, and oh, just getting history. Okay, from people so like uh, more live tweeting on the yeah, the um, actual stream that they're not carrying yet. Like this. Tom, the Our operator, kicking the off this press conference. Everyone listening to the technical difficulties on speakerphone. Exactly so all the media people that's in the background are all hearing this. this. <laughs> an avenue to relevance in the area. Let me establish where we're at right now. The press conference is in the Kibbe Activity Center, in the dome itself, in one of their team rooms. And they're sitting at a table uh, with a banner behind them. Uh, they're all wearing dark suits, white shirts, and gold ties. And the titles are going to go out of the FBS into FCS with their gold pride. FCS! FCS! We'll get to FCS in a moment as they're setting up the media. You will hear an operator, you'll hear... Perhaps reporters from around the country. Here's President Everyone for joining us. With Ooh, me are the athletic director, Dr. Rob Spear, and head football coach, Paul Petrino. I announced today that the University of Idaho Vandal football team will accept an invitation to join the Big Sky Conference. <laughs> While I understand the magnitude of this decision and the strong opinions that surround it, 
Welcome I'm back. That the Big Sky Conference is the best possible choice for our football program and for it's the our only choice athletes. for your football program. Only. The to the Big Sky is also the right choice for our students, for academic excellence, and for the long-term success and stature of the University of Idaho. You're not going to escape we the APR. And you still have to the follow it. Leading residential and research university. The University of Idaho's prestige and relevance will be complemented by our football program, not defined by it. We will be <laughs> defined by the institution-wide success of our individual and societal impacts. <laughs> by our entire oh, yeah, the experience. drunken idiots whenever our there's an away game. Impact and our statewide engagement. While the passion and dedication of our student-athletes has been consistently strong, UI has always been one of the lowest resourced FBS football teams and therefore oh, sure. that's the reason we achieve a winning record during our time in the FBS. Because you invade so other cities. successful enough to affiliate with any FBS conference would entail unjustifiable, unsustainable expenditures. Competing as an independent with an extremely Your football program is an unjustifiable expenditure. Particularly when we have the alternative of joining one of the most prominent and stable FCS conferences. The Big Sky allows us to renew traditional rivalries and <laughs> offers our athletes the opportunity to excel at Still the not gonna play us. competition, just as they do in our other Big Sky sports programs. Conference stability is important to the future of Vandal Athletics. <laughs> we can't provide stability by hoping another conference will ask us to join them, or that an <laughs> FBS conference might be realized. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Big Sky just UI. asked you to join them. UI has a long history of success on and off the field as part about of the Big Sky Conference. Playing talking. geographically close and similar schools allows for exciting, successful football, much like we have seen in our other athletic programs. Finally, we have spent a significant amount of time considering our football conference options. In fact, the right football conference affiliation for UI was something I was asked about during my interview process over two years ago. Since the Sun Belt announced in March that it would move forward with a 10-team league, we have engaged in dialogue with stakeholders statewide, listened to opinions on all sides of the question, and analyzed the input. Joining the stability of the Big Sky Conference will provide our student athletes with the best experience and the best path to success. Providing the best possible experience for all U of I students across all aspects of university life is our responsibility and our privilege. Moving to the Big Sky is the right decision for the University of Idaho and for our football program. It's where I'm you belong, yeah. Enthusiasm and dedication in our football program, and I am confident that we are ready to move forward. And we would be happy. No, to you're not moving question. forward. You're moving you. back into the FCS. It's a step down, you dummy. You must need to come forward to the mic to ask a question, identify yourself. I, I self identify as a man. <laughs> Sir, ma'am, whatever you're. Oh, sorry. Oh, she's in the uh, bathroom. Uh, David, uh, I'm Michael Sean with the Moscow Daily News. Just want to ask, uh, when, when this decision was officially made, and have you reached out to uh, Big Sky Conference already and talked to Commissioner Doug Fullerton? Uh, yes, thank you, Michael. Uh, we made this decision so shortly after, well, during last week. Keep in mind uh, a little bit and, of context. Uh, that reporter that just spoke was the one that had to um, be protected from being assaulted by the uh, University of Idaho's football presence. coach. Yeah, uh, look up that story. And, uh, and we're ready to move forward, and they are ready to move forward with us. Um, did, did the May 4th deadline uh, add any pressure, uh, make you speed up your decision, and, and did you ask for an extension from the conference, from the Big Sky Conference, obviously? Mike, Sean, no, we did not ask for an extension of that May 4th deadline. As <laughs> you may know, the Big Sky is considering a number of members, and at this point, Idaho not has really. essentially a guaranteed uh, acceptance into the Big Sky. Uh, pending State Board of Education approval, which I fully anticipate, and so, um, so that'd be funny that if they decided um, to jerk them around a little bit and say no. That, that we wanted to know. <laughs> they wouldn't. Have, they'd be homeless. Uh, John Blanchett from the Spokesman Review. President Stephen, obviously, you said this was a. Uh, uh, there were a lot of opinions on both sides of, of this. What are you going to do? What are your plans to reach out to the people who were pretty adamantly against uh, this move? Thank you, John. 
Yes, we, we've certainly received uh, opinions for and against this particular move. It's one that, uh, that there's a great deal of passion. I think the important thing for all of our alumni and supporters to realize is that that passion is very important. It is perhaps what distinguishes uh, vandals, the incredible passion they have for the university. Passion they does not define vandals. They call it passion. I call it getting drunk and ruining Boise residents' lawn after they lose. Or win, by the way. Years to this point. I'm confident our alumni will line up behind us and support our students and support our student athletes. Uh, this question is for uh, Dr. Spear. Uh, as far as Title IX compliance goes, uh, what does this mean in terms of uh, eliminating sports? And have you have you reached out to those coaches whose whose uh, coaches or whose programs may be eliminated? Well, go ahead and take that one if you would. Well, thank you for the question, Michael Sean. As I communicated, <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's some acrimony there. To eliminate any sports at the University of Idaho. Does that does that mean uh, as of as of now you'll be in compliance with uh, with uh, all Title IX? Uh, obligations, even if you uh, drop down to Big Sky? Yes, we will. Thank you. How do you handle this transition? Obviously, scholarships will be affected. What's the move here in the next couple of years for you personally and for your student athletes? I think, first of all, my, my number one job as the head coach is to graduate student athletes. So that, that's where everything starts. Um, we've done a great job since I got here of improving our APR from an 838 to a 957. Um, our first year here, Yay, we graduated 75% of our student athletes. Our second year, we got it up to 83. And this last season, we graduated every single student except for one. Um, next year, by... December, we have 24 seniors next year. They'll all be graduated with the exception of three, and they'll all graduate in May. So that, that's where it starts out. Um, the second thing is to bring in 18-year-old um, young adults and watch them grow and help them become successful 22-year-old adults, you know, and move forward and become successful men. And then the last thing is to develop them as better football players. So my job really doesn't change. That, that's what my job is. I'm going to go 100 miles an hour to do all those things. And so... We're going to make sure we bring them in, we graduate them, we help them grow and become better men, and then we put the best football team we can. And I'm very excited for our team next year. I think we're going to have a great team, and um, I'm just going to move forward and keep doing my job as hard as I can. Are you not worried too much about 2018 right now? No, you're worried, and that's why it's good to have a two-year plan to get there. But um, by, by having the two years to get there, we will make sure that we're where we need to be scholarship-wise so that first year we can go into the – you know, into the playoffs and, and be successful there. Well, you know, it was in response to that. Dan on KIVI in Boise. Uh, this question's for Mr. Spear. Uh, as far as scheduling goes, how does this affect with the Power Five conferences that you already have on schedule in the future? Oh, they're money games. We'll need to evaluate that. We've had <gasps> conversations with some of the schools. Oh, I know what that answer means. That means they're going to lose some. We'll proceed. Uh, we are going to move in to the Big Sky in 2018, and we'll adjust that schedule accordingly. Uh, uh, Follow-up question with that. Could there be a possibility in the future of renewing a rivalry with Boise State down in Boise? No! I'll take that one. No! We Absolutely not. a rivalry with Boise State. Absolutely point, not. No! Uh, renewing that rivalry is something that will require cooperation of both schools, and we're certainly ready to cooperate on renewing that rivalry. Oh, yeah, it's ready to cooperate. That's how you're going to phrase it, you jerk. All right, we'll transition over and take some questions from the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, over the phone, if you wish to ask a question, please. You're listening to live coverage of the University of Idaho accepting an invitation to go back to the Big Sky Conference on Sports Radio, The Ticket. Press the pound key. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press star and then one at the time. One moment for the first question. Nobody wants to ask a, ask a question? Or is the phone bridge broken? Beep! 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 Beep!
the scholarships to the number that, that is required in the SBS, and, and what is the plan for that as of right now? Oh, oh, the precedent on that question. We have worked with the NCAA. We have worked with the NLI people. We are very confident as we move forward. The NCAA views this it's black and white. To be eligible for the playoffs, we have to be at 63 scholarships. We have a transition plan. We'll be able to accommodate the needs of our current football student athletes and also ensure that we're going to replenish the program for the future from a recruiting standpoint. I would simply like to add, if I may, that the NCAA has assured us that normal transfer rules apply to our current student-athletes. And, and so we anticipate that those student-athletes will stay here and they'll want to stay here to participate in the great football program that Coach Petrino runs and the great academics that they're engaged in. As you remind ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question, please press star than one. A follow-up question from Dave. Please go ahead. Just want, yeah, I want to follow up uh, with, with Spear real quick about is, is there a plan to get down to that number by a certain year? Is it you know, in time for 2018 or where, will, will it take so a little bit? This is where you that? start to really well, irritate an irrational person who's asking me to. <laughs> then we will be at 63 scholarships in 2018. And there are no further questions in the queue. All right. Uh, this question is for Paul. Uh, Paul, uh, when did you let your team know, and uh, what was the reaction from the players? I let them know this morning. We had a we had a team meeting this morning at eight o'clock, and you know the biggest thing that we talked about is we finished spring ball with a lot of excitement. Felt like we really played well, and we're going to go into this off season. First of all, they got to finish really strong these next two weeks for finals. You know, we talked about that. Uh, we talked about we're going to have a great summer and really focus on on having a great season next year. And that's you know we'd had a team just meeting a fan, just uh, prior to this, just talking about the momentum that we have and how we're moving forward and how we're really excited to have a great season next year. And and I felt like the the response to the team meeting was very well. And right now, this whole week, I've been meeting with each player individually, and um, that'll continue through today and tomorrow. And and I told the freshmen and sophomores because really the junior and seniors nothing changes for them, but. Uh, a lot of the, the freshmen and sophomores that if they need to talk more one-on-one, -on -one, that they're going to come and meet with me more throughout the weekend on the weekend. Uh, and a follow-up to that, a lot of people who are advocating for the FCS move were advocating for that because it, it may ensure, you know, more success uh, at, at that level. Does that <laughs> maybe put more pressure on the program to succeed right away when you get into the big sky? Um, I, I don't look that far ahead, to be honest with you. I'm looking for <laughs> next season. And next season, I'm looking for us to be That's an odd year, question to give in the middle of something like this. Hey. Sean Kramer with this one's in review. Um, this one's for Dr. Spear. Um, I want to kind of go back to the boosters, uh, especially those ones who advocated for FBS. Um, you know, Staben, uh, you know, has an optimistic view of it in the future, but in, in the short term, is it going to be difficult to keep those guys on board? You don't you know, have the rules wrong. of the game changed, Sean, they don't when we got into FBS. Say it you have autonomy, you have full cost of attendance, you have all these different things are happening. You had rules change to allow conferences to participate in conference championship games with just 10 members. So the game we, that we signed up for has changed over time. And as you've heard the president talk about, it is really impossible for us to afford to stay at that level and be competitive. And I'm about the student athlete, the student part first. And I think it's really important. No, you're that not. We that, we've been playing money games for years. Don't lie. Because when we provide a quality degree from this institution, that's a lifetime changing situation. And I hope that our supporters understand the core mission of this institution is to provide a great education. We've got some work to yeah. do. Whenever it's bad for sports, you can always count on them to say, um, you know, academics, education. To look at options. Yeah. We are going to kind continue of a out, to you know. be the best that we can, can be. And, and really what we can do right now is control what we can control. Okay. Um, I know one thing that, that you and, and President State are trying to really get done here is, is a basketball uh, arena and a bed center. Do you yeah, think okay. this will have any impact We're good for on about that? another 10 minutes. I'll take that one, yes. The arenas are our top fundraising priority at this point. 
We think it's critical to uh, uh, the improvements in our basketball program that we want to see. I think it's a great example of, of how we want to invest, and we hope that others will join us in investing in the future of Vandal Athletics. A recent development that I think is extraordinary was that our students levied upon themselves a facility fee to support that basketball arena. Clear our students want a great residential experience, one that offers great Vandal athletics and excitement on campus. And this, this move That's to SES is, is related, is really part of that. And we, we need to, to do that, and I'm, I'm quite confident we will be able to do that, to build a basketball arena. Uh, Theo Lawson with the Lewis and Tribune. This is for uh, Chuck Steven. Uh, from my understanding, you guys hired an outside consulting firm to, to weigh your options. What did the results from, from, you know, from that study show, and uh, did, did you guys make your decision based on those results? Oh, well, yeah, Big so Sky we, Conference we, is not tweeting know, about it. <laughs> consultant, and we received a consultant report. Uh, those results uh, were consistent with most of the information that we had received ourselves in the past, um, and, um, and and therefore we used that report. We used yeah, good luck with input that from boosters. Frankly, I've met with other college presidents, with commissioners, with the NCAA. This has been a long process, and that report was only one small part of that process. But the information we received from the report was consistent with with the decision that we made and with the bulk of the input that I received. And uh, one, one more for Paul. You uh, you accepted a job here when, when the school was an, uh, an FBS school. Are you prepared to make the transition in two years when, uh, when Idaho drops down to the FCS? Yes, I am. Drops Moving down. <laughs> I like how you mentioned it there. Yeah, I'd like to, to ask uh, Mr. Stephen. Um, a lot of college football people on the outside would, would think that this, the first time this has ever happened, uh, would think that this is not a good thing. Um, but Oh, it's a very good thing. Thanks for the question. Actually, uh, colleges have made decisions about their athletics programs that are that are somewhat similar. The one that is probably somewhat. the classic is the University of Chicago choosing to leave the Big Ten nope. in 1946. Now, it's been a long time since 1946. I appreciate that, but but. Really, the decision was somewhat similar. The decision then and the, our decision today is that we want to focus on the student athlete. We want to focus on a great experience for those, for those people who come here to play football. We want to ensure that every time our students spe step on the field, they will be competitive, that they will have the opportunity to excel. Our, our student athletes in all of our other sports, uh, are competing successfully for championships in the big sky. We believe our football team can do that in 2018 and beyond, and, and, can, and can get our, our student, our football athletes can get great education here as all of our other students do. So we think this is not actually a, an unprecedented decision. It's motivated by the same factors that have motivated decisions at this university for 127 years, and have motivated other schools to make somewhat similar choices. That's not cool. frequently, but it has happened. All right, we we'll wrap things up, I think, and uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you. For the All right, uh, the press conference essentially lasting approximately 18 minutes, uh, somewhat cut, uh, dry, to the point, and somewhat somber. Uh, Jeff Cage here, <laughs> Bob Beeler, Chris Lewis on Sports Radio, uh, The Ticket. You academics, just education. Uh, okay, I'm going to cut it off here since this is just the radio stuff. Pinching it off. Program. Uh, <laughs>